There are so many tools that are available to us while using Babylon JS. There's a known material editor, a sandbox so that you can test all your 3D models, your assets, animations. There's a GUI editor, and there's even well, kind of like an IDE, something similar to Unity. I prefer to actually just use code itself, just type it all out. There is one available if that's what you really want to use. There's so many tools available. I'll go ahead and link the website down below and you can take a look at some of these tools. Like I said, there's just so many. Today, we're going to take our first look at the playground for Babylon JS. Well, I really don't use it all that much anymore. I did when I first started. The main reason why I really don't use it anymore is the fact that it's it's web-based. You, you have to be online to access it. And I find a lot of times it would, it would come up where I wanted to work on something, maybe I'm at the park, and uh, I just, I didn't have internet. But it is still really a great place to get started. One of the great things is when you first come to the website and you open it up, you're given a template where everything is pretty much already here to start your, your project. And right now, all we have is a floor and a ball. This is what it gives us. There's no real setup for your project. It's already handled for you inside of this playground. I'll go ahead and leave a link to the playground in the description down below. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we get here. To the right side, this is our, our scene. We can move around depending on what camera you have set up. You can use the arrow keys to go in and out and then really hold down any button to kind of like move around. Now the default settings are pretty quick. We can adjust those later through code. And if for some reason you get too far off screen, you can just reload the page. And that will give you the template all over again. If we come a little further over, we can open up this little panel here. And this has a, a ton of uh, examples and they're all broken up according to you know, the type. This is really great once you get the basics down and you can go and maybe specifically look for something that you want. And there's a few other buttons up here we really should look at. So the engine, which one do you want to use? By default, we're using WebGL. Um, I prefer to use WebGL2. Uh, we are going to have to restart. And take note that when you switch engines, if you've made any edits to your code over here, you're going to lose them. So make sure to save it, which is this little button here. You can click it and you would save it somewhere onto your desktop. And all modern browsers, the main ones, should support all three. At the time of this recording, I don't think Safari does web GPU yet. It might, I'd have to double check, but most of the browsers I use are Chrome-based and they support all three. Now, if you have some reason to go back to an older version, you can select it here. I'm gonna be using the latest from here on forward. And a couple other things we wanna look at. Right now, I'm in TypeScript. We can click on JavaScript if you prefer that. And all your code now is JavaScript. Again, when you click on it, if we take a look here, let's make a, a small comment. If I go and switch types back to TypeScript, uh, TypeScript, uh, TypeScript, uh, I lose all my changes. So make sure to save them. And then you can just reload them back in. You can also just copy paste. Um, maybe not for JavaScript to TypeScript as you are gonna lose the types. Now I know most of the people watching this video, at least on my channel, are familiar with C-sharp inside of Unity. You're used to having your data types, actually, well, your data having types. Well, I'm by no means a wizard at JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, I do prefer TypeScript over JavaScript just because I, I like my data to have types. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the code that we have over here. So I've come over to TypeScript, I've created this class. Well, I haven't created the class, this is the default. Uh, it's just our playground. Now the four basic components that you need to set up any sort of uh, application inside of Babylon is you need an engine, you need your canvas, you need your scene, and you need your camera. And inside of the playground, it takes care of the canvas and the engine for you, depending on your your dropdown that you select and also what language you want to take. Oh, sorry, the, the canvas is over here. <laughs> if we go to JavaScript, you don't see this except for the engine. It passes it in for you. But again, I like the, the explicitness of TypeScript. So for setting up a scene, it's pretty easy. We just come in and we just call the Babylon.scene. Now there are a few different cameras that we can use. In this case, we're using the free camera. Not my favorite, but it's the one that they give you. Uh, the first parameter, just what we want to call this camera. Think of it as its name, not the variable name, just the name. The next parameter is where we want to position. Now, if you're coming from Unity, it's the same. X, Y, Z, uh, positive on the X goes to the right, negative to the left. Positive on the Y goes up, negative goes down. And on the Z, negative comes towards you where, so comes towards you, so you'd move further away and positive moves closer. 
And then it's also kind of important when you're first setting up your camera, set a target. In this case, we're just looking at the dead center of our scene, just, which just happens to be where our spear is. You can actually target an item inside of uh, your scene to always be looking at. The attach controls command just allows us to have the basic movements. Now there's a, a few different lights that we can use. The hemispheric light, this is your ambient light. Again, the first parameter is just what we want to name it. And the next one is the direction you want it to shine in. And then when you only have one scene, you really don't need to pass the scene back in, but I always do anyway, and it is the default. And there's a lot of parameters we can change on this. As we go through and start setting up a scene by ourselves from scratch, we can look at a lot more of these parameters. So how do we add things to the actual scene? Well, we just call them. So we have a mesh builder. In this case, we're gonna create a sphere. We're gonna call it sphere. There's a bunch of properties we can give it. Now, for those that are new to JavaScript, this is an object. Think of it as something similar to a dictionary. It's just a JSON object. You have the parameter name and the value. In this case, we're setting a diameter of two. We can change this, go to four, and let's lower the segments. Let's do eight. And then we come up here, hit play. And it made it bigger. And also take note, since it has fewer segments, it's not as smooth. Let's go even lower. Let's do four and we'll hit play again. And it just gets worse and worse. Of course, if you go the other way, let's go to 50. Oh, not well, 450. <laughs> let's just do 50. And of course, make sure we have the closing of the object. And we hit play and it gets smoother. So the more segments, smoother it is. Now we can change the position as well. So there is a position Y, position X, position Z. Again, up, down, left, right, forward and backwards. And then for creating the ground, there's also just a create ground. You can use anything we want for the ground, but they do have a ground built in. And I think the parameters are pretty self-explanatory for something that's basic like this. So let's go ahead and set up um, a stack of cubes. Let's do uh, like three cubes and two on top of that. Let's take a look at how we do that. So I'm gonna put them right here. Now they like to use the var keyword here and you can use that, but in TypeScript, I like to use let and const depending on whether or not it, the object itself is, well, at least at the variable, if it's gonna be pointing to something different. So let's make a, a box here and I'm using the let variables called B, I'm going in, we're calling the mesh builder. I'm gonna create a box, which I'll just call box. It's gonna be a size one. I'll add it to my scene and it's just gonna be dead center. Now I'm also gonna get rid of this sphere, not completely get rid of it. I'm just gonna comment it out. Now we have to come down here and comment out the position as well because well, the sphere doesn't exist. Now if I were to hit save, uh, it pulls this up and I can go ahead and make some titles and changes here. I'm not gonna bother for this one. It's pretty, pretty small. I'll just hit play. And there we go, that's our cue. Kind of hard to see. Let's move around a bit. Let's move it up a bit. I can come down here and just say b.position.y and I want to make that equal to one. And again, uh, I tried to save. And now if we go ahead and try to take a look at this. We don't have any shadows turned on. We can, we'll look at that maybe uh, in a separate video on how to enable shadows and get everything reflecting right. But for now, I just wanna work on maybe a, a small for loop to uh, build up all my boxes. Now I'm gonna store my boxes inside of an array and with TypeScript or JavaScript in general, this is a fancy way to do it, like the JavaScript way. But again, since most people watching this are coming from Unity, we're used to uh, the C-sharp way. So for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and do it the C-sharp way. I'm gonna come in and we'll get rid of this box down here that we did. I'm actually gonna go and get rid of all the sphere stuff. And let's take a look at this code. Let's save it. It's actually, whoops, not like that. I wanna tab it in a bit. There we go. So I'm making a, a new constant, which I'm calling box, which is just an empty array. And then for the C-sharp people out there, this for loop should look pretty familiar, right? We're gonna start off, I'm starting off at negative one and I wanna go to two. We're increasing by one. Then I'm gonna create a box. And for the name, I'm gonna use box and just follow by the number. You can put a space in here if you wanted to, but I want the number right up against the box. I'll make it size one. We're gonna add it to the scene. Then I'll go ahead and adjust the position. And I'm just doing a little calculation here because I want it to be offset just a little bit, like a, a tenth of a unit in between each box. Then of course, we gotta move the position up. And then this is how we add an element to an array inside of JavaScript slash TypeScript. So we just push it onto it. So now if I go ahead and run this, I now have three boxes. I'll click in, we'll zoom around a bit. I think the next one we'll do is on camera, on camera res. And they're above the ground. We've got to move that down a bit. So that's about a half a unit. 
We'll go ahead, run it one more. And there we go. Uh, that should be it. <laughs> we really should slow that down, but not with this video. Okay, so we got that. Let's add the next row on top. And again, instead of watching me type, I've gone ahead and done all of this ahead of time. And we can just save it or load it up this way. And for all my high school students out there, you know how I hate sloppy, sloppy tabbing. But we'll fix those up. And again, it's just like it was before, except note that I'm moving it up one more unit. And the calculation for the spacing is just slightly different. I'm just subtracting a half. That's just so it covers the hole like a pyramid. I'll leave it to you to do one more and to uh, put the, the top of the pyramid on. So we'll go ahead, we'll run it. And if we take a look, looks like I have to take a half a unit off of this one as well. That's fine. We just go to 1.5. We'll run it one more time. And there we go. So working inside of Babylon, not that hard. As I said before, there is an IDE that's very similar to Unity. It uh, doesn't have all the features Unity has, but it seems to have all the features that you really need to make large scale scenes. And every week I'm probably gonna look at a special one of the special tools. There's so many. I'll try to leave some links down below to some demos of these tools that I found pretty impressive. But that's it. That's all there really is to this. A couple other buttons to take note of. If you ever want to just get rid of everything and start fresh, we can go ahead and just hit the trash can. It gets rid of everything. You cannot control Z to get it back. So take note, you make sure you save it first. If you hit this, you can save it to your desktop. But if you just completely screwed it up and you want to get rid of it, trash can. If you want to start with a brand new template with nothing in the scene, here we go. So I don't know, maybe go from this one, see if you can go from memory and add uh, the floor and all of our cubes again. So that's it for this one. I just wanted to quickly introduce you to the actual playground. Make sure to take a look at some of these tutorials over here. Like I said, they really do have some good stuff and they're constantly being updated. But in the next video, we're gonna go ahead and set up an environment on our local machine so we don't have to be connected to the internet. But anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.